So tonight's REC parliamentary reception has been a great opportunity to tell the story of our industry and its scale and importance to the British economy. But it's also been fantastic to hear politicians react to the suggestions we made in our Overcoming Shortages campaign. And it's a real delight uh, as uh, someone who leads the REC to see the ideas that REC members have put forward really being picked up and run with by politicians. The, critical, uh, the critically important thing is we stop dealing with the labour market as a series of individual policies and start thinking about, think about the enabling environment that government and businesses can build for opportunity, for growth, for inclusion, for productivity. So hearing both Justin and Guy tonight talk about working together across departments, whoever wins the next election, is super important. So the recruitment and staffing industry in the UK is bigger than law and it's bigger than accountancy. It's a really important professional services sector. If you look at what we do, it's a million people into new permanent jobs every year and a million temporary workers onto site every day. Of course, in a tight labour market, it's not just about delivery and increasingly, clients are understanding that it's a professional service where recruiters and staffing firms are offering advice to clients but they're also helping candidates with their journey to build their careers, a crucial part of a successful UK economy. It's been an absolutely fabulous evening. I mean, I think one of the things is uh, recruitment is at the heart of everything um, that this economy does. And so it's been so good to get such cross-party representation coming along and really recognising the value of the work that REC does in terms of raising these issues and also coming up with solutions. And so it's a cold, wet uh, winter's night in um, January, but you can feel the sense of energy in the room about actually wanting to change something. So I've been really pleased to be part of that, and I think the speakers that we had were good. And the thing is, it's actually putting rep on the front foot, which is what we want to do. Yeah, it's really great to be here tonight, seeing um, this fabulous, to, to have this launch in this fabulous place is really brilliant. You know, overcoming skill shortages and staff shortages is so, so important to the economy right now. Um, you know, some of the things that we've heard tonight about the impact of the um, shortages that we're seeing in the UK is really, really important and we have to work to get this right moving forward um, for the good of everybody, for the good of UK PLC for um, youngsters coming through so that they know the kind of jobs that we've got available right the way across all sectors, all industry sectors. And also that think about also the ageing population, which I know um, colleagues have touched on tonight, um, and making sure that people have got that continuous employment that they want um, and that that reskilling and retraining um, is such an important part of what we do do do. I think the policy recommendations are absolutely bang on. Um, you know, having read the report um, and seen some of the stats and also some of the recommendations that are coming out of that, you know, it is making sure that what we as a recruitment industry are doing, can, we can work with government to make sure that those policies are pushed through and that what business needs to address is actually supported by government policy and making sure that we can do things easier um, and getting rid of some of the red tape around what we, what we do. Well, I'm absolutely delighted that we're having a debate about what I see as one of the most important issues facing the economy at the moment, which is the labour shortages issue. And this has short-term ramifications in terms of what it means for inflation and growth, but also we have to think about the long-term macro implications of issues such as an ageing population and immigration. And what we found is, is that amongst the 50 to 64 year olds, there's a quite a strong number, of strong evidence to suggest that people are retiring and leaving the workforce for reasons of possibly pensions freedoms, uh, that they got used to working from home, a different lifestyle during uh, COVID, and also built up a lot of savings. I'm very pleased to, to be here tonight at the launch of the Overcoming Shortages report. I think it's a really good report. It looks across the world at actually common challenges lots of countries are facing at the moment in terms of trying to find uh, those gaps in the workforce. It's very clearly uh, put in the report as well about what the economic impact is of us not having that, uh, that skilled workforce that we can uh, get to recruit and, and, and importantly retain as well. There are lots of interesting examples of 
way, the way it could be uh, tackled from around the world, but also some good case studies uh, more locally. I think it's a really important uh, piece of work, and I think it's something that we need to address uh, as a country, not just government, not just employers, but all of us working together to tackle these issues together. We're very, very appreciative of the uh, analysis you did of the agency workers' regulations and your, your very strong position on that. And, uh, as I've said tonight, I think it's important that, uh, that we, we work with all interested parties to make sure that we do the, do the right thing and, uh, and, and tackle some of these issues.